Thank you for doing this, Steve. I know a difficult day for everybody involved. If you can, uh, just start by uh, walking us through the process of how this uh, decision was made today. Well, you're, you're constantly evaluating your group and, uh, you know, I think early on in the season for us with uh, with the injuries, um, it was a little bit more challenging to really put a finger on uh, on on our play and, and the inconsistencies of it. But uh, as time went along, um, you know, I think a lot of the same things were our demise. And, uh, you know, we were we, you know, we we, we it was there's an encouraging portion of this, I think, uh, we started we started to play a little bit more consistently um and showed some great signs and you know i think we fell back into the game that we were playing early on in the season and to me i think uh um you know it's never never good timing but for me i think this was the time for uh you know to make the decision to uh, bring some hope to our players and and uh, really in search of uh in, in search of some consistency to our game if i can follow up um I'm assuming that you uh, met with the players, but can you and, and, and like some information on on that if possible? But at the same time, uh, how did DJ handle the the the, uh, the firing? Uh, well, DJ handled it like a true pro. I mean, he he worked he worked right to the end, um, and uh, you know cared about this group and uh, was a big part of the development of a lot of our our players, our young players, to get them to this level. So. Um, it was a difficult day for them, difficult day for me. It's a difficult day for our, our players because I think we all uh, feel a sense of responsibility in it, and including DJ. Um, so he was disappointed in himself um, and had a little like a true pro. And, you know, so uh, we had a good long conversation um, and uh, he accepted it and, uh, uh, again, was disappointed that he couldn't see it through. message to the players yeah my message to the players i think was was one of uh you know these are these are tough days um uh i gave them the rationale on the decision and the timing of it really i mean i um i think with some of the things that i saw with our group as far as inconsistencies uh is uh is a strength of jacques martins um along with daniel alfredson i think we're all looking for more consistency um you know, uh, more detail to our game, more structure. And, uh, you know, so explain th to them the rationale behind it all. Um, had a chance to, and Jacques's been around the group a little bit now and they're getting to know him. And uh, uh, Jacques had an, an opportunity to address the group and on what his expectations were. So, um, you know, I think like any time on days like this, there's, there's disappointment and uh, uh, because we all feel, somewhat responsible for being in this situation and then um, optimism moving forward. Hey, Steve, the next question is going to come from Wayne Scanlon at sportsnet.ca. Oh, hi, Steve. Thanks for doing this. I just Wayne. wondered, you let, you let, um, <clears throat> you let Davis Payne go. I guess he's looking after the forwards and not Jack Capuano. Just wondered about that rationale there with letting an offensive coach go and not the guy that's looking after the D. Well, when you look at, you know, the, you know, as we're shaping up this, uh, this entire group with, uh, with Jacques being in the middle of the bench with, uh, with the, with the clear messaging and, uh, you know, the leadership and the calm demeanor. Um, and then you, you look at Alfie's strengths, which are plentiful. And uh, uh, you look at his ability to work with our forward group, um, you know, his ability to work on the power play. And uh, that's what's led to putting this group together and, um, having a good balance with Jack up running the defense and the penalty kill, um, you know, along with Ben Sexton. So just balancing that out when you bring in someone like Daniel Alfredson, he's going to have a massive impact on, on the team in general in all areas, but also when you look at the offensive side of the puck and the power play, um, you know, we're looking forward to Daniel to taking, taking full uh, hold of that and, and, uh, and improving uh, our group in that area. Steve, the next question is from Ian Mendez at The Athletic. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, Steve, I've got two questions, if that's okay. The first one would be, um, you had a couple of like pretty long gaps in your schedule, whether it was 
you know, after Sweden, uh, before Sweden, how seriously did, did you as a, as a kind of ownership management group contemplate making a change at that point to maybe allow a new coach, I guess in this case, Bijak, to come in and have a few days to work with the group? Well, like I said, you're always, you're constantly evaluating your group. Um, you know, when you, when you look at timing of, of things, you want to make sure that uh, you're taking everything into account, having patience, um, providing the right resources and communication for that coaching staff to be successful. Um, and you, you want to give them every, every chance to get uh, this thing moving in the right direction. So I don't know if I was to your question, Ian, as far as the timing of it coming off of Sweden or the gaps in the schedule, I was looking more at the consistency of our play. Um, you know, after the Florida game, there were some changes to the game plan and some of the structure and, and things into within our game. And uh, I was encouraged for five games, even though we only won three of the five games, but there were certainly great signs of, of improvement. And, uh, um, when I saw our game start to revert back to where it was before, um, that's when it, I, I felt like it was time. And, and, and my other question for you would be about kind of bringing Daniel Alperton in now on a bigger role. And I know when you first brought him in at the start of the season, the feeling was, Hey, um, he didn't want to necessarily travel. He didn't want to have a huge time commitment. Obviously that's going to change. So what was that conversation like with Alfie to, kind of pitch this opportunity for him to be behind the bench now? I think for me, you know, even from the beginning, the more that Daniel Alfredson could be around our group, I think the, the better, bigger benefit it was to for all of us. Um, so it always kept that in mind. As in my more recent conversations with him, I think he saw the same things as I did as far as our, our gameplay. Um, and uh, I mean, he cares so much about this team and about this organization. So when I approached him again about coming on full time, um, he said, uh, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. So, um, you know, that started the ball rolling on uh, maybe looking at, at a different dynamic and, and having Alfie in here. So, I mean, I'm extremely appreciative of him uh, uh, making that commitment and, 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 and being in our, our, our group full time. And I think it's going to, make a big impact. Uh, Steve, the next question is from Bruce Garriock at Post Media. Hey, Steve, just um, wondering, when, when did you really start seriously considering this move? Well, again, Bruce, I don't know. I mean, you're all, again, you're evaluating every night. You're, you're, you're trying to take uh, the, the right approach as far as uh, my job to make sure that they have all the tools in place to be successful. Um, and you want to exhaust all of that before making a major decision like, like we did. Um, so I don't, again, I don't know if there's a specific timeline. I think when you know, it's right, it's, it's right. And uh, I wanted to give DJ, I, there, there would have been nothing more than I'd like to see for DJ to see it through with this group. And that was my goal in, in this all. Um, there was never really a specific timeline it was more on just the consistency of play. And um, again, I was encouraged for a stretch of time there where our team was moving in the right direction. And I felt like we took a step back here over the last week or so. Just a couple more things for me. Um, why did you let him coach practice? I mean, the, the timing of these things, Bruce, I think I'd had my mind made up just more recently. Um, to be able to uh, get everything in order, um, you know, it took a little bit of time. I mean, there's never really a good time. Um, you know, I didn't want to rush through and make sure, we made sure that everything was all covered before we had uh, we had spoken to DJ. And then the last thing for me is naming Jacques as the interim, number one, I guess, what are you hoping he can do? And, and and where do you think this group needs to be, for lack of a better term, straightened out? Well, I think a lot of our issues um, in, in our team play are the strengths of Jacques Martin. Uh, detailed, structured, organized, um, you know, disciplined. Uh, so to me, in theory, he's the perfect fit 
for everything that we had been lacking in those areas. And so, uh, um, you know, he, he brings his, his voice and his experience to the middle of the bench. So that will resonate with our group. And then, I mean, as you know, it's a, it's a big job and we have great coaches on staff and, uh, you know, bringing Alfie in and, uh, Jack Capuano with great experience as well. And also Ben Sexton, who will elevate his role in, uh, in all this. So I think that Jacques has the proper support around him. Uh, to be able to execute on his his messaging and uh, on his game plan. Steve, next question is from Claire Hanna at TSN. Thanks very much, Chris, and thanks, Steve, for doing this. Um, with regards to Jack being interim, um, how long do you envision him staying in that role, and are you going to continue searching for somebody who might take on the role of head coach in the future, or is Jack the guy for right now? Well, I think we're, we're, we're constantly evaluating Claire, um, you know, uh, the interim, uh, you know, uh, head coaching position is Jacques Martens and uh, we'll do what's best and evaluate, um, you know, for a, a full-time long-term head coach for our group. As far as timing, I mean, you know, um, never easy during the season, but we have some time now and have stabilized the, the coaching staff moving forward. So, um, we'll continue con continually evaluate and, and go through a process to, uh, to to identify what would be the next head coach of the Ottawa Senators at the appropriate time. And then just to follow up to, um, you mentioned that Jock had a chance to talk to the players about his expectations. What was that message to the players about what his expectations are right now? Well, I think he was clear that uh, he's encouraged by the group. Um, I think he, he, he wants to bring a level of discipline and structure to our group and, and being organized, uh, um, with a game plan. So, um, he wants to bring the best out of each and every player. He wants them to play the, to their, their strengths. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll create the environment around this group to, to be able to, to do that. And, uh, I think what's consistent with Jacques is, is, is detail and, uh, and I think that with this group in this phase of, of, of build and maturity, um, Jacques brings all those elements. Steve, the next question is from Lisa Wallace at the Canadian Press. Hi, Steve. Thanks so much for doing this. Um, I guess the question is, was there ever a consideration to bring anyone else other than Jacques or was Jacques' familiarity with the team and already being part of sort of the staff, um, the easy fix at this point? Well, I think there's many considerations, Lisa. Uh, you know, uh, you, you go through all the dynamics and personalities and strengths and weaknesses of any candidate that might be out there. Um, I think that this was, again, a perfect fit from the area of our greatest need uh, at this time with this group, with the experience of this group and how this group is continuing to develop. Um, so having Jacques in-house and in and around this group, um, and then again, adding the, the dynamic of Daniel Alfredson, to me feels like a good fit. Um, you know, I, I, I think that they'll, they'll work extremely well together along with Jack Capuano and uh, really kind of address the areas of need for our group right now. And just to follow up then, Jacques was, you know, sort of that eye in the sky as had Alfie been, is there any plans to bring on any other additional staff at this point? There isn't a, there isn't a plan to do that. I think what we'll, we'll see is how this all unfolds with this group. I mean, in theory, you look at bringing the right people in the right positions with the right personalities involved. I like the dynamics and the balance of this group. Um, so, uh, again, but my job is to, and we've been, uh, clear with, uh, in Michael's messaging is adding all the resources and tools to help people be successful in the organization. Steve, the next question is from, uh, Sylvain saint -Laurent at Yes, yeah, Steve, uh, regarding, uh, the search of a permanent head coach, uh, are you of the opinion that you need to first bring a GM in order for that GM to, to be able to, to pick uh, a head coach with whom, uh, he, he will work well? Yes, I think that's all part of the process that, that we've been continually working on here. Um, you know, it takes time. I think from a timing perspective of, uh, of when I've arrived with this organization, um, you need to be in and around it and feel it and see it 
and identify uh, the areas that that need to be addressed. And uh, you know, I guess un unfortunately these things take time, but we want to do it right. Uh, I guess uh, we're 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 fortunate with the owner owner that we have in Michael and um, him providing the support for us to be able to do those types of things. So um, there's certainly a long term play and objective. Uh, and there's certain things that we do not want to rush. That all being said, are we talking about the possibility of maybe weeks, months? I don't know if you can even, you know, advance yourself in, in, in that term. Yeah, I don't want to put a timeline on it slide because I think these decisions are too important to to make sure that we're balanced and structured moving forward. Uh, Steve, the next question is from Kyle Bukaskis at Sportsnet. Hey, Steve, uh, just my question is, I mean, you make this decision at a at a time where you're you're at the, the bottom of the Eastern Conference standings, and I understand you still have you know, a number of games in hands on on a lot of other teams, but I'm just curious, you know, how how you will measure success for this group here now over the final 56 games, knowing that, you know, the changes can't be be done overnight. Yeah, yeah I'll, 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 <laughs> I believe in this group. I believe in this core. I believe that we're, we, we have lots of areas to improve in um and uh we, we we lack experience i think in some some areas which you only get that by playing the games and getting through it but what i'm looking for is consistent play you know i think that uh, there's been far too many uh times through the season where I'm not quite sure exactly what we're going to get on a night by night basis so um i think there's a there's a process that needs to take place with this group um you know starting now and um i know that uh, jacques is process and detail oriented so i'm expecting that uh, you know the team will play uh more consistent in 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 a lot of areas i think that there's been drop off in certain areas i think you know when you look at our our special teams in particular um i'd like to see more consistency uh steve the next question is from dan rosen at nhl.com Steve, thanks for doing this on a tough day. I understand that. Um, there's been a lot of change within, I mean, the general manager, the coach, I mean, previous to the season, the owner. Why is this team, this group of players, in your mind, equipped to handle all that change and is still establish the consistency that you're looking for? Well, like I said, Dan, I, I do have faith in this group. I have faith in, in the leadership of this group and the, and the character of this group. Um, I think with the right guidance and environment that they can they can get to that level. Um, there's there's plenty of room for optimism uh, within our group and, and uh, with with the individuals that we have. So um, I think it's our job now to make sure that we steady these things. There are there have been a lot of changes. I don't think you know there there isn't there there isn't a year I don't think where there there's as many changes as we've had to deal with and um, certainly lots of adversity to deal with as well. But again, we want to look at the short-term solution to make sure that we give our, our players the best chance to, to compete on a, on a given night and also uh, make sure we're, we're, we're taking a long-term look at this to make sure that we make the right decisions there. And if, if I could ask a follow-up to, uh, and I understand the timeline being what it is um, and you're not, you don't know it, are there available candidates for coaching that you would interview now in season for this job or is that not something you are looking at at this point? I think we'll look at all avenues to make a, make the right decision for this, for this group. So um, the, the answer to that is yes. Uh, you know, we would, we would consider um, all avenues to be able to, to improve uh, our organization, both short-term and long-term. Uh, Steve, we've got time for two last ones here. So next up will be Pierre Lebrun at The Athletic. Uh, yeah, Steve, um, you go back to Sylvain's question, just to follow up on that. I mean, in terms of a timeline, how important is it, do you feel, to when we talk about the one-two punch at the top of the management group, whether that's you as GM or you hire a GM, <clears throat> but you, you are looking at, probably hiring someone, how important is it to get that hire out of the way before you figure out permanently what, what happens be behind the bench? Yeah. Again, Pierre, from a timeline perspective, we want to make sure that it's, it's, it's the right, 
it's the right fit for our group and the right structure for our group moving forward. Um, you know, I, those things, the, these things do take time. And, uh, uh, the last thing we we wanted to do is make any rash decisions. I think even with the decision that we had made today, um, you know, on the coaching side of things, I think we were patient. Um, we wanted to give it the right amount of time to make sure that we made the right decision. And, uh, you know, that's, that's how these things work for me on a timeline perspective. You want to make sure that you're making the right decisions, but you want to take the appropriate amount of time to do it. Um, I don't want to put a timeline on when our next hire is on the management side of things. I think we're continually getting our work done with the staff that we have in place at this point in time. Um, but I do anticipate that, uh, there will be a there will be a time where where we can add uh, people to structure this thing out uh, you know the proper way for the long term. Thanks, Steve. And Steve, the final question this afternoon is going to be from Greg Wyshynski at ESPN. Thanks, thanks, Steve. Um, I was curious about the Daniel Alfredson part of this. Um, I was wondering if he had expressed an interest in becoming a head coach one day. Does he sort of see this as more of a a temporary need for him to join the staff. What have what is your view on on what this means for Alfie going forward? Well, Alfie's a talented guy in a lot of different areas, so I think that he's got great hockey acumen. And um, if he decides that he wants to coach, or if he decides he wants to manage, I think he's going to be successful doing uh, whatever he decides to do long term. As far as right now. Uh, Alfie is extremely committed to the Ottawa Senators and our group. He believes in what we have here moving forward. Uh, he believes in the approach that we're taking. Um, and uh, he's willing to do what it takes to help this group out. So um, I'm extremely appreciative of his commitment. Um, this wasn't what he had planned on doing for this season. But I think when he sees where the group is at, uh, and what he can bring to our group, he's been able to, uh, you know, make up his mind that he's going to fully commit to to uh, to helping us moving forward. 